out there. <laughs> it's me, Brianna, and you're listening to episode seven of Are We Caught Up Yet? Marvel edition. Um, just to get everything out of the way really quick, you can find us on youtube.com slash Save the Game Media and podcast services. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you want to show Save the Game Media extra love and get early access to all of our content, you can find us at patreon.com slash Save the Game Media. Um, please join. If we get to a thousand patrons, um, Kevin gets a butt tattoo. So it's very important. <laughs> um, today I'm joined by my co-host and friend, Sam. How are you? <laughs> no one said warm. anything about the twerking thing, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's probably for the best. Probably for the best. Anyways, you were saying you're really warm. I'm very warm. Uh, we've had a heat wave the past few days here in the UK. Uh, probably is is nothing to most other places in the world, but us Brits are not built for heat. How hot? Um, um, converter up here. Okay, we'll see now because it's technically cooler outside than it is inside because my laptop is registering right now 22 degrees celsius which is not crazy higher than we normally have here mm -hmm. but it's not crazy crazy you know but we were in the high 20s earlier which is like, that's virgin 29. on yeah 28 29 that sort of that's range. only 84 degrees yeah see you <laughs> laugh but we aren't that's not we are used to gray, cloudy, and in, in, like wet. I'm not. This sounds very judgmental. The way I approach the question, I promise it's not. It's a genuine curiosity. Have you been in like 110 degree weather before? Which would be, let me do the conversion. Uh, like 43 degrees Celsius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I've been abroad, mm. um, okay. Egypt, Turkey, Greece, once or twice. Oh, it was particularly hot there. My dad was wanting to go to Egypt in July. And I said, no. Dad. <laughs> he burns That's like just... like that. Like he like yeah. literally he'll put sunscreen on and then just think about going outside and he's already sunburned. So I'm like, there's no way. <laughs> like Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, um, I'm very warm, very busy with redacted stuff. Um mm -hmm. only the... fans. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, you know, he's out now. Um, you know, top one percent of uh, of creators on the platform. You know, I've only been that doing would be it. really impressive, actually. I've only been doing it seven hours. You know, that's, that's just got to up your game, people. Do you want to shout yeah. out your username so people can find? Absolutely you? not. You know, it's a it's a it's a it's a need to know basis. For those okay. that know, they know. Oh, if you know, you know if, if you know, you know. Yeah. Okay. It's like a virus. Once you learn it, mm -hmm. you spread it to other people. And that's just, <laughs> you know, the uh, the entire southwest of England is just corrupted. <laughs> um, <laughs> what, I, what was I saying? You were um, just saying you've been busy working yeah, on I, I, I've been I've been busy, busy being tired and warm today. Mm. That's 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 me. Mm, okay. Well, yeah. on, on that note, <laughs> so my little sister graduated last week, two weeks ago. I can't remember anymore. Time um, so cool. Yeah, uh, almost two weeks ago. So a bunch of family visited um, to celebrate or whatever, right? Through that visit, I found out <laughs> my Aunt Kim, which is my mom's older sister, listens to this podcast as well. So my mom and my Aunt Kim listen to this. There we go. So shout out to my aunt Kim. Hi. <laughs> but yeah, just you know, while we were on the topic of OnlyFans, <laughs> I should bring that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, have you been watching anything? No. 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 Um, Are you planning on watching that new Tom Holland show? No. No. Because anything he's done outside of the MCU is trash. I heard this was really good. I also heard that he's really messed up after this and has to take some time off acting. 
he is taking supposedly a year off of acting. Um, I would argue that the critic scores so far on that show would suggest otherwise. No, oh, I haven't looked at that. Yeah. I mean, not that that's necessarily a parameter you should measure anything by necessarily, but it is typically a relatively good indication of what sort of thing you can expect. Mm. And this is like at a 30%, which oh, that's isn't sad. great. Um, I might watch it anyways. He's Well, that's not true because I don't know if I love him with the long hair. Yeah. He's really cute. but I think I think Tom Holland is one of those actors who's – very good but he's very good at doing one particular thing mm. um and everything that he's done outside of the mcu has been not that one thing mm. he's very good at playing like the dorky but adorable um high school you know young adult who's a bit bumbly and, and makes mistakes and stuff he's very very good at that but anything else he's been in he's been either miscast or he just hasn't sounds harsh but stepped up to the plate you know um and, and yeah. delivered like an authentic performance for want of a better word um so yeah i shall not be watching that unfortunately mm. um but no i haven't haven't been watching anything uh, obviously i finished watching succession a couple of weeks ago now at this point morning not having that anymore um and i'm waiting for the 21st of this month to start secret invasion i don't even know what that is that is the next marvel show oh okay so yeah not something that i'll be starting not for a good long while okay <laughs> uh are you gonna go watch the barbie movie by the way no lame <laughs> no, unless it gets like really good reviews, which I just don't see happening. Um, I think a, a very specific subset of people will go and watch it and love it. And I can't even define what that subset is. I think but, like, I it's might going, fall it's, into that subset. It's going to find a, a click with uh, certain people and they'll rally around it and probably like fangirl slash boy over it a lot you know it'll be memed to death and stuff but i just even though it's going for something which i would appreciate more so than just an outright barbie film it's going for more like social commentary stuff which is at least a bit more interesting it just it doesn't seem sophisticated for me enough yet like it, it's mm. it's on the right path but they just haven't shown me that the level of commentary and stuff is going to be sophisticated enough to warrant me wanting to go see it. But I could be, I could be talking out my ass, you know, that could be absolutely excellent. I hope it is. I hope all films are great, but I, I will probably be going to see Oppenheimer instead. You know, if I have to choose between the two. I will not be watching that. It does not sound like anything up my alley. <laughs> I'm a, I like Christopher Nolan. So what can I say? It has nothing to do with that and everything to do with it was like, I can't even remember. Was it Taylor describing it? To, yeah, it was Taylor describing it to me. And he was like, oh, it's about like history. And then as soon as I heard the word like past or history or whatever, I like tuned out. I was like, nope. <laughs> it's about the, the creator of the atomic bomb. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and how he uh, how he sort of came to regret that decision and the political fallout after the first test and stuff like that. The film will probably end in a very respectful way of um, the bombs heading to Japan, I think. Mm. That's probably where they'll end it. You know, Should it sort of have... feels very succinct way to close it out. Have you seen Grave of the Fireflies? Have I seen what? What? Grave of the Fireflies. Never even heard of it. Mm. It's a Ghibli film, actually. Oh, um, wow. I'm surprised I've never heard of it then. Yeah, it's a World War II Ghibli film from... The perspective of Japan. Oh. Kids in Interesting. Japan. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll check it out. Yeah, you should. I would regret telling you that. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> let's move on to the film. First up, spoiler free, general thoughts. Iron Man 3. What do you think? I liked it. I thought it was really good. I actually really liked that they kind of started tackling like some of like the emotional consequences. Yes, yes. 
<laughs> so yeah, I thought it was good. What'd you think? You hated it. Terrible. So this is arguably the most. Is that the weather? The rain? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, that might actually be hail from the from how loud it is. Um, yeah, if my power goes out, thunderstorm, guys. So you know, we'll we'll do what we can. We'll figure it out one way or another. Hopefully, touch wood, that doesn't happen. And that's when that's when my power cuts. Um, this film is arguably the most interesting from a conversation standpoint, um, and in terms of how it was received then, how it is looked upon now, um, retrospectively. It's probably the most uh, hotly debated one that we've tackled thus far. Mm. Um, and I think you could probably determine that, I guess. Once you've seen the film, you can understand why it might be contentious for some people in terms of comparisons to the other Iron Man films. But that being said, I too love this film. Um, I mean, you didn't say love, but I do love this film. Um, it, it's not excellent by any stretch of the imagination but i would say and i think this this only comes with hindsight and, and the ability to be retrospective which you don't have yet i do think that this is the best iron man film of the three um i know you will likely say that iron man one is still the best i completely get that um you know iron man one is a classic um all things considered but like you said, and I'm glad you, that was the first thing that you mentioned, like the, again, I've, I've said so much in these things so far about how things are going to start weaving together and the pieces will start fitting together nicely and you'll see the connections and stuff. And it's done in a very grounded, believable way here. Um, obviously non-spoilers, so we won't, we won't talk about what specifically, just in case people haven't seen it. Uh, it's been out for a decade, but you never know. Uh, you hadn't seen it until recently, so you know. Um, and I avoided spoilers. That's and you did. That's, that's that's the more impressive thing, I think. Um, but it, it it really delves deep into Tony Stark as a character, um, into Iron Man, and and what that means. Um, it, it it tackles more of the sort of hero's responsibility thing and the sacrifices that that come hand in hand with that. And, and it's interesting to see Tony try and, and handle that interplay between his personal life and, um, you know, being a superhero. Uh, and I think the film ends in a really interesting place. Uh, again, no spoilers, but I, I think that it's it's an atypical ending for a superhero blockbuster film um definitely in terms of what we've watched thus far in terms of these these uh podcasts but even then it's like w without spoilers tony makes a decision and it's one that you would never have really seen him make even at the beginning of this film it sound it feels like a weird choice mm -hmm. but i think that i think that by the end of this film they don't fully earn it but i buy it which is it's nice it's it's a nice shake up to sort of end not really knowing what the future holds really so yeah no i i think this film is is very good mm. so I want to piggyback off of that, but I am going to jump into spoilers. So if you're here and for some reason you haven't watched the film, you have been warned. Um, hmm. So I think so particularly what you're talking about, I believe, is him blowing up all of his Iron Man suits, right? Yes. And and mm -hmm. um, getting the arc, re arc reactor removed from his chest. So, you know, right. he, he doesn't have that metal so close to his heart anymore. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's sort of like a fundamental change um, for for the character on a, in a physical level. Right. Okay. So I think like kind of jumping off of that, like I think I do think it's really interesting. And I kind of we obviously like like, well, I don't want to say obviously like it. I feel as though it's obvious because of like even just movie posters. Iron Man isn't done with the MCU. 
So I'm interested to see like how like he comes back in because mm. I know for sure he comes back. I mean, it's very obvious. Again, movie posters and stuff. Like, um, I would say like my biggest thing here is I really love that they do tackle the consequences of like having gone through like this big event. I don't think that they necessarily handled it the best, but like I do think that like I appreciated that they did handle it. Period. Mm. Um. And I also am interested, like, I wish that we could also see, like, further introspect, like, into how this, like, this reflection continues. Because I think a lot of the times what what is reflected is, is once heroes are done with their, like, quote, unquote, hero's journey, there's a lot of hollowness that comes without having that kind of excitement in your life. And I'm really wondering how he's going to handle that, especially with the way his personality is, where he's, like, he is very this very important person to himself and he thinks everybody thinks he's important kind of thing right and so since he is like that is his personality i would really be interested to see how he handles like settling into like a quote unquote normal boring life mm -hmm. and if that's enough for him but obviously we don't see that in this film yeah so yeah no it, it's interesting um i i i will say obviously spoiler free This is going to confuse you, but you both will and will not get answers to those questions. Okay. At the exact same time. Perfect. So it's like, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. That seems paradoxical, but yeah, you'll you'll see when we get there. And it's, it's okay. not long, but you'll have to wait. So. Okay, sounds good. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I really do enjoy when stories kind of tackle this other side of, like, the adventure. Um, one of my favorite handling of this is, um, it's actually a kid's show, Steven Universe. Um, so Steven Universe, like, he, like, it's, like, this whole show where he has to, like, save, this, save the galaxy or whatever. And then there's a second, there's, like, another season called Steven Universe Future, and it's him in the future a few years after, like, the galaxy saved or whatever. And, like him having to like deal with the consequences and he's like no i'm fine everything's fine but he's like not fine he has like tons of trauma so i always like find those kinds of stories like interesting where it's like you've done your hero duty like and how can people expect you to go back to normal i guess so, yeah yeah um but, uh, and 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 just as an addendum to that can, is it even possible to go back yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't think they, the answer is typically that nothing can ever be the same as it was, right? Because just mm -hmm. that's how life is, unfortunately, um, and fortunately sometimes. But I mean, I also think that depending on how you handle it and what's happened, I think you can have some semblance of normalcy. So I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens. There's a balance to be struck at the very yeah. least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. Um, okay. So first thing, soundtrack. I don't think it was very, it's like, it's still a little nonspecific. I mean, it did still feel Iron Man because they like choose those like rock, whatever songs, but still nonspecific. It feels like. They, they have, have, like you say, good licensed music throughout. Um, you know, with a film opening up on, um, I don't even know what the song is called. Is it just called I'm Blue or is it is it Blue? I, I don't yeah. know what the song's called. Um, that's odd that I know that song, but I don't know what the song is called. Huh. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> we all know what song I'm referring to. So mm -hmm. they have that. I will say, and again, it, it is difficult to discern, particularly on like a first viewing for you, this film better than the other two does kind of establish a theme for Iron Man. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily super obvious or even well utilized throughout the film necessarily, but there is a piece of music specifically from this film that not only carries forward in in some degree um but 
if it is played. I mean, I know it's kind of a a, a pointless thing. It's it's a rhetorical question for me because I will recognize most pieces of music from the MCU. Um, but there is a piece of music in this film that I think is undeniably Iron Man. Um, if if we got a few more films down the line and I played the track to you without any context, I think you would probably be able to, at the very least, guess that it was Iron Man because of how it sounds. Mm. So, like, it, it's not perfect by any means, but it's, it's definitely a They're step starting. in the right direction. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's good. I hope that that continues to develop. I'm sure that they, like, have not developed as much as some other soundtracks, but Good for them. Yeah. Um, here's the tracks for you guys. Ready and fire, some kind of joke, some kind of monster, American blood, no time, one more minute, back to the start, keep moving, redemption, big bad wolves, bad guy, and let's go all the way. Really crazy. Um, like, Imagine Dragons, AWOL Nation, <laughs> 303, like. <laughs> Yeah. I feel like I'm in high school. <laughs> like, uh, to be fair, it did come out while I was in high school, but yeah, very, yeah. very, uh, very eclectic. Tony Stark yeah. is, you know. Yeah. All righty. Well, cool. I'm glad that they're at least starting with the soundtrack. Hopefully, I can start to recognize stuff. Um, do you want to do? Actually, I wanted to ask you. I don't remember catching Stan Lee. In this film, he he's in there. Yeah, he's for sure. There. Let me look. Iron Man three, um, cameo. Oh, there's a nine second clip here. I can't even recall it in my head for some reason. I watched this film. Oh, five it's when he gets into the news van, and there's oh, yeah. recording of the news, and he's yeah. the person that's like voting. Yeah, he's the... uh the beauty pageant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did not catch that. <laughs> yeah, very, very subtle thing for him there. Yeah, but... I was just like, oh, look, an old man. <laughs> I didn't even catch that. <laughs> uh, anyways, okay, that, that was my that was my main question I forgot to ask earlier. Anyway, there you go. Um, okay, through line. I really want to start with through line because this was one of my biggest disappointments with the film. Okay. We've now had Avengers. They now know that the Avengers, like they... Like, obviously, he knew before that these other people existed. But, like, why are we still in the point where we're not helping each other with things? You, you're just going to have to accept that as a fact. That's so like, annoying. It's just going to have to be a thing. because, uh, And I get what you mean, but... Um, Is it supposed to like, be, like, they're busy? Well, I, I guess that's technically like a, a, a logical reason that you could ascribe to it. I don't think it's ever really commented on necessarily. I mean, actually, no, that's a lie. Sometimes it is, and there is like some kind of plot justification for why either they are too busy with something else or they literally shouldn't be allowed to come near this specific thing for a specific reason. Um but I think that the it's just like a, a trope that they have to continually utilize Ugh. to make it so that all of these films aren't essentially just Avengers films. I mean, the thing is, is like if it was like, hey, most everybody's busy, but we can bring in one person. Like, I you, think that that okay. would be like fine. In that case, in that case, when we get to later MCU down the line, you'll get lots and lots of that. OK, um, okay. that is a lot of what the MCU is currently. Okay, um, that's fine then. Because I was assists, just like, but... if you're really like this distressed and you need help this much, like you've not called in one single person, like, you know. What I mean? But th but then I think I think thematically there is some logic to it in the sense that Tony is obviously dealing with post traumatic stress and anxiety attacks from the the Battle of New York, but he even in this film with the characters that are in the film, he doesn't really share that, you know, it's evident to some people like, uh, like Pepper, obviously she experiences some of it firsthand and the, the consequences of it, but he is very 
well, he, he's Tony Stark about it. He's very bravado. He's very no, everything's fine here. I'm I'm Tony Stark. I'm Blames Iron it on Man. the kid. Yeah. Um, so it's like I know what you mean, mm. but I think that it, it might require minimal leaps in logic and sort of um, suspension of disbelief. But I think that there is at least uh, some credibility to the idea that. Tony wouldn't ask for help outside of like War Machine. Yeah. Who's technically another like, hero, but I think that the thing that like threw me off the most was like I knew that War Machine was there and I knew that they, he was helping in this situation. But when the like I can't remember if it was the president or the vice president or whoever said like, oh, like we need to call in our person, I was so sure that was Captain America. Like, who else could that... You know what I mean? Like, like why are they not calling Captain America? <laughs> like, they're like, the American president is in trouble. No one call Captain America. <laughs> I, su I suppose. But then the within Iron Man 2, it was established that War Machine was working with the U.S. government, right? He He's right. essentially a, a free agent of the U.S. government. Right. Um. So like I uh, again, I know what you mean, but it's but, like yeah. technically the the stuff is there. It's just that they don't necessarily adeptly explain it or, okay. or, or logic it out within this film itself. It's sort of you do have to pull on, and it is something we'll have to do a lot going forward. But pull on previous threads to help okay. fully make sense of moments that that happen or, or lines that are said in this case. So. Sounds good. Um, well, let's go ahead and do let's do characters then. Um, how did you feel about War Machine in this film? Um, he's the best he's been thus far. Mm -hmm. Um, but still, he is very much playing second fiddle to Tony. Like he he, he still yeah. isn't given much to do. Um. The, I think that there is a conflation that happens with fans, which is, I think is slightly incorrect, where they view War Machine as a very one-note, one-dimensional character. And I don't think that's entirely correct. I think that there are elements of truth to that, at least in how he's been presented thus far. But I think that, you know, keeping in mind the idea that Rhodey has been a in, in the military basically his entire life, um, he believes in the idea of, you know, as as corny and cringy as it might sound to some, he believes in the idea of America and, you know, um, the the land of the free and all of that stuff. He is very, very patriotic. Um, hence, why it gets you know the the suit gets renamed to the Iron Patriot in in this film, um, with the the red, white, and blue paint. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that there is a, a lot of runway for Rhodey to grow still, and he hasn't been, I think, effectively utilized all that much, but I like that at least in some segments of this film, it is, it's like a buddy cop between him and, and Tony, um, mm -hmm. which I think is what worked really well in very, the, the very small segments it was there in the original, mm -hmm. um, I like they sort of capitalize that on a, on a little bit more here. Um, but yeah, still, still plenty of, of room for improvement. Yeah, for sure. I definitely agree. Um, I do really enjoy his character though. I think that like he <clears throat> provides a lot of comedic relief in really clever ways. Mm. Um, and I think that his character goes really well with Tony's character. Um, so I think that that's he sort of, part of he sort why of grounds it's... Tony. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's kind of like what makes it a double-edged sword is that he is like a really good compliment to Tony, but that also means that he kind of needs Tony to like. Uh, he he's the less fun of the two, just by yeah. default <laughs> in that in that scenario. So yeah, but I have to say, like one of my favorite moments was like him <laughs> just asking for the password. <laughs> I was like, you're just gonna ask for his login, dude. I just, that whole interaction really cracked me up. Um, yeah. 
and you like I don't like you can barely catch it but like when he's typing in the password it's like one of those passwords where it, like you can see the letter briefly and then it turns into the dot and you can see mm. him like type in the password yeah <laughs> it's just it was I, I really did enjoy that I thought that he um I, I really enjoyed him in this film I think that he had a lot of really good moments so yeah absolutely um okay do you want to talk about Tony next or Pepper next which would you prefer? We'll get to both eventually. Mm, let's talk about Pepper. Okay. Okay. Um, I had a really hard time with her character this time, I feel like. It wasn't like all bad or anything like that. I just feel like she kept flipping between acting like herself and like not acting like herself. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, like it was almost like because she's always been very much like I feel like next to Tony and like on step with him, even if she like isn't like a hero. Do you know what I mean? She's always been like like right there with him. Hmm. And I feel like a lot of this films, she was like kind of flipping between like, yeah, I, I'm the same person. And then like kind of flipping between like damsel in distress and like it kind of is like a weird flip. I What I do appreciate about that is that like, or about this though, is that like she, for all of her like damsel and distressness, didn't like, she ended up kind of saving herself and saving him at the end, which I really appreciated. Um, yeah. But I feel like she was out of her own character sometimes during this film. I wouldn't necessarily disagree but I, I think I think that that is 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 a a um, it's an active decision to to make her like that because really it's that is kind of the the point to every main character in this film that they aren't quite who they used to be or aren't who you think they are you know. Hmm. Um, we, you see that with Tony where he's not the same man anymore. He's been, you know, absolutely destroyed mentally and emotionally by what he experienced and what he did in the battle of New York. Um, you know, Pepper is obviously struggling because she loves this man. She wants to be there for him and support him, but he is so consumed by this PTSD and therefore on top of that PTSD, the desire to prevent that from happening again tony goes overboard and that's why he's creating all of these suits because that's all he can think about all he can think about is making sure he has all of these things so that people are safe you know that's that's one of what he says um at one point in this film down in his workshop he's like you know the one thing i care about is you like i i have to make sure that you're safe um so it's like there's a love triangle going on between Tony and Pepper, but the third person isn't Killian. It's the suits and the idea of it's Jarvis. <laughs> you, yeah. Um, <laughs> and the idea, just a, a posh English butler guy. Um, <laughs> I actually really like Jarvis so much. Jarvis is great. Jarvis is I great. Um, wish they did more with him, but Absolutely. anyway. Um, yeah. The, the third personal thing in that love triangle is the suits you know um and that's sort of like the push and pull where tony is doing a a reckless thing that is endangering other aspects of his life social romantic but he's doing it for a compelling and logical reason mm -hmm. um, based on what he has experienced thus far so it's like I, I I'm with you. Like I think that all of these characters are, and even you know, going to like the Mandarin. Like the Mandarin, there's a reveal oh, I love there that. that <laughs> it's not who you think it is. Um, and even even then, if you get, dive deeper into like specific moments of the film, you have the reveal of um, War Machine on Air Force One. You know, everyone on there thinks that it's Rhodey, but it's not. So I, th I think that it's a a logical decision to make it so that everybody is going through some kind of internal change um, or, or, or external perception change from the point mm. of view of others, um, which is why I think it's my favorite Iron Man film, because I think it really 
it only really becomes apparent when you do delve deep into it. Um, mm -hmm. I can see why some people might think of it as a, as a relatively shallow film in the grand scheme of things, but I think that there is is depth and complexity there. Um, you sort of have to pick a part of it. it. I might be on copium, you know. I might be just looking well, at things that aren't there. But... I don't think so, but I think that there's like a lot more. Like they could have stood to make all of these like emotional beats a little bit less cheesy. And I understand it's a hero film, so like obviously, like they're, they're going to lean into the cheese. But I think they could have leaned out of the cheese a little bit further. That's but, that's what. Sorry, just to say, that's probably one of the biggest criticisms of, of this film in general, like the, yeah. the cheesy feel to it. Yeah, but I'm I'm not like necessarily upset with that. I think I'm fine. Uh, but I I do I do think that like there's a lot to be had not only in the film because they do because it is cheesy. They do just flat out say a lot of things. Um, but I think that there's a lot to also be had in like like our interaction with the film and in like discussing the film. And I do think that like this film more than others has like a lot of, a lot of that depth that, that you don't, I haven't found it in the other films as much. Sure. As this one. So I yeah. don't think that, I don't think that you're crazy. I do think you are a fanboy, but <laughs> I, I am you're a not crazy. So, you know, I, uh, uh... You know, I will admit it and be proud of the fact that I'm a fanboy. Um, but yeah, no, like, and again, like you said, just in terms of Pepper, um, before we move on, it's like, I like the fact that ultimately she is the thing that saves Tony. It isn't his suits. It isn't some MacGuffin that we have never heard of. It isn't another hero coming in to save the day. It's the thing he was trying to protect is the thing that ultimately protects him. Um, and again, I, I, I think that there are, there are ways that they could have handled and executed it better. Sure. But I like that even though she becomes super adept at using these extremist powers out of nowhere, um, I, I still like that there is that element to her character, even though they obviously suggest by the end of the film that she's having it removed, uh, for good reason, because it's volatile, but even like back earlier in the film when the, the the Tony Stark's house is being attacked, like she wears the suit and instead of staying outside, she rushes in to, um, you know, try and help and protect him and, and saves mm -hmm. him from debris and stuff. So it's like there are moments where she isn't just a damsel in distress, which is what you said, Absolutely. but just sort of providing that additional context for people who, who maybe haven't seen the film for a long time or something. So it's good stuff. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um. Okay. What other characters do we want to hit? Do you want to do? Um. Let's do Killian. Sure. And Mandarin. I feel like they're kind of go hand in hand. Sure. Good old Trevor Slattery. <laughs> ole 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 ole. Um. <laughs> so he's, he's, he's just great. Um, so I don't know how much contextually you know um, this the reveal that the Mandarin was in fact Travis Slattery is arguably the most hated creative choice really in the entire MCU Now, obviously, without context, that doesn't make much sense because it is it really a funny does. reveal. Yeah. Um, but the Mandarin is historically um, in the comics. He is of Asian descent, um, which isn't necessarily, you know, they can race bend characters if they really want to. But obviously, Mandarin does have Chinese Asian connotations. Yes, um, absolutely. I did think that was weird. Yes. Yeah. Um, so they sort of took it in name only, really. And in the in the build up to this film releasing, I remember it very well. People were excited, and they were like, "Oh, that's an interesting choice to to make Ben Kingsley the Mandarin. Like he's obviously not Asian, um, but he looks like he's giving a compelling, you know, quite intimidating, um, dominating performance. So I'm into it. Uh, it's actually probably worth you watching some of the Iron Man three trailers just to see how 
tonally different those the trailers are compared to what this film was and then you'll see why the backlash happened um interesting but for the reveal to to have it not be him and for him to be trevor and then for killian to technically take on the mandarin mantle which is arguably even worse because it's like the most straight white male you can get in guy pierce yeah. love the guy but you know you know what i mean um it rubbed people the wrong way particularly because up until this point in the mcu definitely and unfortunately for quite a while yet we we're lacking um a good amount of Asian representation, just representation in general, but specifically if we're talking here, Asian representation, um, and for like the villain of the um, Asian superhero space to be treated in this way as as a joke, which is funny, um, but like if you have that added context, it's it's sort mm. of yeah, it can be viewed in poor taste. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that, and I do think that like with the context of it, it is kind of weird completely out of context i thought i still thought it was weird i was like why is he not asian like am i missing something yeah um but yeah i think that the, the like they really could have easily ve like very easily fixed it by just naming the character something different yeah yeah absolutely absolutely that like that would have been a really easy fix <laughs> like, yeah was nobody like hmm that's weird <laughs> I don't know. Apparently not. I mean, the one thing I will say is that Iron Man 1 and 2 were directed by John Favreau. Um, this film was not. Um, okay. This film was done by Shane Black, who typically does either very cheesy action films or comedy or both. So it's like you can see the DNA here and why maybe he would find this kind of thing funny. Which it is, like it is funny. Like it Trevor is, is a funny yeah. character, but in if it's if it's sacrificing a potentially compelling character who is also representative of a underrepresented community, it's like, was the trade off really worth it? Um, but you know, it is what it is. We we got what we got. So yeah, too late now. You know. Yeah, maybe in the remakes they'll fix it. Maybe next time round <laughs> they'll they'll know better. Okay. Um, and then Killian, he was just, I didn't love his character. I thought he was kind of annoying. Yeah. He's, he's presenting very milk toast, really. Um, I, I like the, the setup that he's given, like at the beginning, you know, the idea that, um, he met Tony way back in the day and he sort of held this grudge and he's come back and he's super attractive and it's a bit it's a bit tropey i'll admit mm -hmm. but then he's like is he competition for pepper i know putting pepper in that position is a bit weird because it's like she becomes materialistic and an object in that scenario but anyway you know you, you know what i'm getting at it's like i like that mm -hmm. there is at least some thought into why he is specifically iron man's villain in this film as opposed to just a villain that iron man happens to encounter yeah yeah, it makes sense. And um, like I think that they did like a good job setting it up, but also like I don't know. I'm I am hopeful that we'll start seeing more because if these films are very isolated where they do all of the setup and the payoff in one kind of thing. And I would rather have seen like the setup for Iron Man 3 in Iron Man 2 or something like that, where you like just get like a brief story. Of like, oh yeah, this one time, and it's like, you know, like kind of out of context. And then when it comes back in Iron Man 3, it's like, oh my gosh, this guy that he was a jerk to, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. I would rather see more of that, but oh well. Yeah. And and I I think I think the the first half of this film in terms of Killian is better than the second because he's a more compelling villain when he where he is more cerebral. Mm -hmm. um you know he's like he's got genius level intellect and he's he is the mastermind behind a dangerous thing as opposed to being a dangerous thing himself so yeah. it's like you know tony back in the day disregarded his intellect because he didn't care and he's you know a playboy that comes back to bite him but it comes back to bite him not in oh it's going to be a macho against macho big cgi fight yeah it's going to be this guy who can 
tackle him in terms of his brains, but also he is technically a threat in terms of his personal life as well yeah. with Pepper, um, obviously having history with Pepper. So I, I is it cool when he breathes fire? I guess it's cool, but like you he gets more generic by the minute in the second half yes. of the film, which is Yes, that, that was my problem. Yeah. They I mean they did a really good job setting him up to be like a good villain and then like you said, the payoff itself was maybe not the best. Yeah. Um, okay, I think we have two characters left that I personally think we should talk about. Um I would say Harley and Tony. So mm -hmm. if you want to do Harley next? Whatever you like. <laughs> All right. Well, I really enjoyed Harley's character. I thought that that was especially cheesy sometimes, but I really enjoyed it. Um, mm. I really enjoyed the banter between him and Tony. I don't know. He's like, he's like, well, now look what you've done. You made me look at like, I don't know. It's just like. It was just a fun time, and I really love that Tony like came back and like put all that stuff in his garage. And, yeah, and such. I don't know. Like, like I think one of my favorite lines in the film was when he was like, "It was worth a shot." When he was like trying to guilt trip him. <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's like, I had a he's good like, time. Uh, I was like, um, I'm cold, and Tony's like, I know. Do you want to know how I know? Because we're, we're connected. connected. <laughs> and then he just, he does the window up and then drives off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think, I think he, he acts as a very good uh, companion to, it's a nice change of pace, I think. Uh -huh. um, Absolutely. And this film, you know, for, for want of a better descriptor is, is a Christmas film. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, it's, it's nice to have not only a kid, because, you know, kids are typically, part of the cornerstone of any Christmas film, but to, to have in a film that provides a different perspective on Iron Man as a character and Tony Stark and his, his psyche and his personality to also then get a different perspective, literally from the point of view of a child looking at this person who is now renowned, renowned across the world as this superhero. Mm -hmm. um, sort of having to deal with what, having a superhero in front of you dealing with some tough stuff actually you know works up to being it's uh again i think it, it it's a usp for this film that i don't think we've really seen in any, anything else thus far yeah i really did enjoy that i think that not only do we get to see him like interact with a kid or whatever but we also like get to see him like just in like a different kind of setting as well like where it's yeah. like small town america like mm -hmm. really quiet town kind of thing so I enjoyed it. I, I I think that like that section of the film was probably my favorite. So, yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. I think they do some clever um, blocking as well in terms of like what they make the characters do within that environment, whether it's, you know, when he's escaping the uh, extremist woman, I think not that it necessarily reflects on the location itself, but I think that that's where some of the most, ingenious stuff happens like putting the dog tags in the microwave to make it explode you know that kind of thing mm -hmm. i like tony thinking on his feet and we see that the most in this in that section of the film so with you there yeah absolutely um okay last character that i think we should talk about is tony unless you had anything else to say about harley no no i think i'm good in terms of uh... okay um we've already talked a lot about tony but i think that like I don't know, just again, worth mentioning, like, I think it's interesting to kind of see him go through this stuff. I think my biggest problem was I don't think that they used the right flashback scenes. I don't know what scenes they should have used, but when he was kind of like flashing back to like the Avengers stuff, like some of the scenes that he was flashing back to, I was like, I don't think that that was necessarily the most traumatic thing that happened, but. I don't know. You'll understand why. It's hard for me to say anything without, um, without, and no, actually, no, technically I can because, yeah, no, no, it's fine. Um, I think the reason that they flash back to the things that they do is because the specific shots, specifically, that they show, um, I think are the most reflective within that first Avengers film of 
like a a looming incomprehensible threat mm. you know i okay. think i think that there, there are technically more tragic moments in in the avengers film that you could point towards that might have like emotionally affected tony more but i think like the the anxiety part of the ptsd should really be what we're keeping in mind right like it, it he is rather than being stuck in that moment because it was like this mind-boggling thing that he couldn't believe he was part of he never imagined it in a million years i mean that's obviously the case but he is again like very forward thinking he's like i need to those kind of things are out there now like we know they are there and inevitably that isn't going to be the last that we see of things of that ilk so i need to do what i'm doing i need to build all the suits i need to do whatever i can to make sure that everybody is safe right um so i think that that's why they chose those moments i agree like without them like tripling down on making that kind of point it's a bit odd because it's like oh he's just he's just flying well, up and shooting people it's like why would he reflect on that well i don't but, think that it's necessarily like it's not my problem wasn't what he was reflecting on and i think like the idea behind what he's reflecting on makes sense i think it's specifically the way they visually portrayed it does that make sense like i don't think that like the visuals itself were the right portrayal of what they were trying to convey does that make Interesting. sense it does i think that might be like a just a personal taste thing though which okay. is fine you know i think that's that's subjective really but mm. um yeah no i mean it, it worked for me so okay. uh yeah take take that as 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 you will okay cool did you want to say anything else about tony's character um not really. I mean, all I'll say is, you know, Tony gets overshadowed a lot. I know technically he's like the face of the MCU, but a lot of people sort of disregard his character very easily. And I think that most of his film appearances are, are more, uh, you know, dynamic and three-dimensional than people give it credit. But particularly in this film, I think that this is the again i guess technically this is this could be considered a spoiler but it, it's not so don't worry this film and sort of how it delves really deep into tony ptsd anxiety based on a previous event i think okay. this is the most of any mcu film to date that has focused that specifically on a prior event impacting them and mm -hmm. changing who they are as a person. Um, and I don't think that this film gets enough credit for that. So Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do want to mention this film does pass the Bechdel test, just barely, mm -hmm. per usual. <laughs> but it does. Um, okay, that covers that. We've done that. Um, okay, last things. I would say if we have any themes we want to talk about, and then through line. Um, so for themes, I feel like we covered a lot of it. Is there anything else that you wanted to touch on that you felt? Um, not, 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 not really a theme that I could boil down to like a, a nice succinct sentence. But mm -hmm. it's more, and it's very evident if you watch the film. So it's like I'm just talking nonsense. Um, you know, I'm I'm uh, preaching to the choir here. But just the, the stereotypical, admittedly, thing of a hero accepting that the powers or the abilities or whatever the persona doesn't make the man. Mm -hmm. The man makes the persona. Um, you know, the, the whole idea of this film, again, I'm just saying the same thing, but that he's building all these suits. It's like, he doesn't, he thinks he needs all of that. And in some ways, he yes, he is technically correct. But 
the suits aren't anything without him. Mm. Yeah, so that's, that's sort of why you know at the end of the film he he throws he gets the arc reactor taken out because he's like this. This doesn't make me who I am. Mm -hmm. This was something that was holding me back because okay. he's so beholden to it that he he can't really envision anything beyond it because it's just been this constant for so long for him so getting it taken out throwing it out into the ocean and then you know the ending line saying that you know no matter what i i i am iron man that kind of thing um i just i don't know i i like it that sounds really stupid to say but i think that to, to view where Tony began, I'm not saying that he's a completely different person by the end of this film, but to see where he began to where he is now, sort of his his ego is always going to be there, mm -hmm. but he's tempered now because he realizes that, yes, Pepper is the most important thing to him. He doesn't need the suits to be successful or to be loved or to be um, to feel safe. I just I don't know I just I think it's it's a really quaint very raw stereotypical message but it's one that I think feels good for Tony Stark to experience like I, I feel like his character who he is deserves this kind of um euphoric release you know this this setting free more so than anybody else that we've seen thus far, I think that he has sort of been the most uh, like torn character we've seen. Yeah, for sure. Because he's experienced so much in so little time, and he has had like no real time to process it. Mm -hmm. um, and he feels like the weight of the world is on his shoulders, and in some cases, technically, it is. But it's like also like how do you process that kind of exactly stuff? It's, he's <laughs> only one man so it's like mm -hmm. you know one man doesn't make an army he's like he needs the support around him he needs happy he needs pepper mm -hmm. um he needs roadie he needs friends and that's okay like it, it's it's okay to accept help mm -hmm. and that's kind of like you know if we're talking to real world thematic stuff it's like that's what the va is about right it's about veterans who have experienced very traumatic things in battle, realizing that it's okay to rely on people who have either had shared experience or people who are just willing to listen and actually do care. Um, and it's a very difficult thing to overcome your pride that is instilled into you by that kind of lifestyle or, or workplace. Um, you know, we saw in the last film, Tony had a very... A rough relationship with his father so it's like he hasn't ever really had the opportunity to open up to anyone about how he's feeling um so he feels that he sh he shouldn't and that's the wrong answer and by the end of the film he he acknowledges that which is excellent character growth in my opinion mm -hmm. absolutely i definitely agree that was very well said um okay anything else okay through line we don't get much um i assume that him destroying like all of his suits is going to at least come back in like at least a one line um probably a little we shall bit see we shall see what we who knows not me <laughs> um the other thing is is uh we get obviously like the whole like ptsd thing is a through line but ignoring yeah. like that piece um we get hulk at the end we do Falling asleep. he's like i'm not that kind of doctor <laughs> you would have thought tony would know that but you know oh i think I he does not. i think he just wants to talk well i suppose so hey <laughs> i guess in that case bruce is being a bad friend <laughs> he fell asleep but he does say never... to his credit he does say he doesn't have the temperament for it which is yeah. true yeah that so, is true <laughs> you know Tony is an aggravating man, yes. and that's putting it lightly. So absolutely, okay. they're both flawed men. It's great. I yeah, it is. I actually it was men are broken. Scene. 
Yes. <laughs> Capital all letters. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Last thing is the ranking. Where would you like to put this on your list? Do you, okay. So this is, this is where I start to lose track. Do you have the list? I do. You're at the Avengers, Thor, Iron Man, Captain America, the first Avenger, Iron Man 2, and then Incredible Hulk. Okay, so Avengers, Iron Man. No, Avengers, Thor, Iron Man, right? Yep. I would place this... If I could place it side by side with the original Iron Man, I would. But okay. for the sake of ranking, I will put it just above. Okay. Any guesses on where mine is? Give me your list, just so I can... Um, The Avengers, Thor, Iron Man 1, Iron Man 2, Captain America, First Avenger, Incredible Hulk. I'm going to say it's between Iron Man 1 and Iron Man 2. You are incorrect. It's number one on my list. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Did not see that coming. Yes. So wait, it so is... this is this is your favorite thus far? Thus far, yeah, for sure. Interesting. Wow. Okay. No, in terms of that, enjoyment. I mean, that's, that's, in terms that's of that's enjoyment, great. I wouldn't say like this was like the best made film that we've seen. No, but that's, but, that's like, what our ranking is. In terms are, of enjoyment, yeah. Enjoyment. Yeah. I'd um, say this was this was my number one so far. Yeah. And I again I'm I'm beating a dead horse, but there's a lot to love about this film. And unfortunately, it is one of the most maligned slash overlooked films in the entire mcu um yeah i think, I think that like it... i have just no context for any of that that's probably what's happening <laughs> no and i guess that's a good thing like you know i, I didn't really have that because i was so in the weeds prior to this film coming out not that i hated the film at all because i did really enjoy it and yeah. obviously still do um but yeah like it's it's i'm, I'm glad because it it is symptomatic this film of not exactly obviously because each film is different but of the sort of stuff we're going to start seeing where there are pairings coming together with you know iron man and war machine and we'll see a lot of that kind of stuff replicated in different dynamics going forward so if you like this we're probably pretty solid okay cool all righty <laughs> well, I don't have anything else to say. Um, so I think we can go ahead and call it. Um, unless you have anything else. We have officially started phase two. Yeah. We're, we're it only took us like in real life time, like a month, but <laughs> you know if <laughs> what is happening? What on that note <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for hanging out with us today um i do want to shout out our patrons um we have bucky blue amon fabulous brianna brianna's mom brianna's brother brianna's wife i do want to pause there yes Lindsay, i do say it every time <laughs> um nikolai at night cypher primus brendan myers marcus o'neill lillian mimi J. The Snack Network, David Hotright, Dave Harp, the Xbox Expansion Pass, and Alpaca Tom, which makes me very happy. Um, Sam, where can people find you? Um, well, I mean, bef before I say where I'm from, where I'm from, what the hell? What? That <laughs> um, again, I'm very warm. You know, it's heat shrink. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll say that you just for clarity's sake for people that are interested the next film we're watching brie is Thor oh, the dark world i forgot to ask about that i would have yeah totally forgot that, well, Good that's job. why i'm here you know thor okay. the dark i need world, to write that down um, yeah thor the dark world I thor heard two, that. Ladies and there's gentlemen. there's a lot of drama around the most recent thor the i can neither confirm nor deny you know that's what TikTok said today. Stop believing TikTok. <laughs> I need to but stop maybe, watching. But maybe TikTok, TikTok isn't isn't wrong. Who knows? Um, <laughs> people can find me on Twitter at Samhini. That is H E A N E Y. Beautiful. You can find me at Fabulous Brianna. 
F-A-B-U-L-A-S-T-B-R-E-A-N-N-A. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. And I hope you have a good two weeks. This is airing as of the first Monday of July. So hopefully you're having a good July. (laughs) Bye. Bye.